Hey friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to share with you two simple tips that you can try today to add more width and space to your mixes and Logic projects. Maybe you're at the mix stage of a project, and when you compare your mix efforts against some reference tracks, which I always recommend that you do, maybe you're coming to the conclusion that your own mix sounds a little too narrow or congested when compared to those references. And maybe you've taken advantage of the whole stereo field, right? You pan things to the left, to the right, everywhere in between. But still, to your ears, your mix sounds a little too narrow. The two tips that I'm going to illustrate are actually from famed mix engineer Andrew Sheps and his template that he uses for mixing his own projects. And that guy needs no introduction, right? I mean, he's done everything. He's amazing. So anything he's doing, probably worth a try. So credit where credit is due. But let's take a listen to this project that I mixed for my buddy. We're going to listen to the chorus section, and then we're going to take a look at two plugins in particular on my Submix channel. Here we go. So let's sleep in for days and hope this life will never change. We'll listen to our favorite songs and we'll sing along, we'll sing along. When we... Okay, cool. Very shoegazy. Now let's take a look at the mixer just so you can see why I'm doing the submix thing. If you're not familiar with the submix channel, it's basically a stereo output before the stereo output. So if you take a look at all the channels in my project, I have many track stacks, and then I have this lone lead guitar, and then I have reverbs and delays, and every single output for every one of these track stacks and auxiliary channels are set to bus 32. And bus 32 is right here, and that's my submix channel. So instead of placing EQs or limiters or anything like that on the stereo output, I just place it on the submix. And this allows me to bring in any reference tracks and then be able to listen to those reference tracks against my mix without accidentally EQing or compressing or limiting the references. You don't have to use the submix channel idea if you don't want to. You could just place your plugins right on the stereo output. I just prefer the submix again so I don't accidentally process my reference tracks. So the plugins we're going to pay attention to specifically are the first two, the Direction Mixer and also the Channel EQ. The Direction Mixer is an often overlooked plugin, but it allows you to adjust the stereo width of a track. By default, the spread is set to one, which is just full stereo width. If you move the sliders closer to the center, you make the track more mono or less wide. And if you move the sliders in the opposite direction past one, you then start to expand the stereo width of the track or mix. Of course, there is such thing as too wide and you can make your track sound kind of weird if you go too far. But what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna set it from one to about 1.2. The other thing we're gonna do is, is we're gonna use the channel EQ here and we're gonna set the processing instead of in stereo, just the sides only. And I've set this to about 8K and I boosted it by almost a dB and a half. And this is the high shelf. So we're expanding the width using the direction mixer and we're lifting the top end of just the side content starting at 8K and above. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bypass the first two plugins, the direction mixer and the channel EQ, and we're gonna take a listen to that chorus again. And then we'll bring in the direction mixer and play around with the spread slider. And then we'll bring in the channel EQ. Here we go. So let's sleep in for days And hope this life will never change We'll listen to our favorite songs And we'll sing along, we'll sing along Okay, with those two plugins bypassed, the mix is sounding a little too narrow and congested now, isn't it? So let's introduce the direction mixer. We're going to leave the input set to left, right. We're not going to touch anything else in the plugin, neither the split nor crossover nor the direction knob. We're just going to play with the spread. So let's hit play again and now introduce a little of that stereo width. Here we go. So let's sleep in for days and hope this life will never change. We'll listen to our favorite songs and we'll sing. Okay, let's hear it before and after. So let's sleep in for days And hope this life will never change We'll listen to our favorite songs And we'll sing along, we'll sing along 
crazy. So the mix has opened up a bit. From there, we're going to introduce the channel EQ. Again, we're going to set the processing instead of just stereo as we would use it normally. We're instead going to work in a mid-side arrangement. And we're just going to focus on the side content. And we're planning on increasing the high end of the sides only just to add a little more hype to that wide stereo field. So let's give it a try right now. I'll hit play and I'll introduce the high shelf and then bypass it and reintroduce it. So let's sleep in for days and hope this life will never change. We'll listen to our favorite songs and we'll sing along, we'll sing along. When okay, pretty interesting, right? So let's now bypass and reintroduce both plugins. So let's sleep in for days and hope this life will never change. We'll listen to our favorite songs and we'll sing along, we'll sing along. I think that makes a pretty significant difference to this mix. Again, you can go too far playing with the sides and widening things up. So I don't suggest going beyond, much beyond 1.2 on the direction mixer. And with the channel EQ, it's just a subtle lift in the top end, just to add a little, just hype on the sides. I feel like I should also point out the console EQ, which is living on the submix as well. And I'm using this to EQ my mix as a whole. And I brought these plugins into my mix pretty early on. I basically started out by processing the mix as a whole before I dug into the weeds of EQing and compressing the individual tracks. So right here, you can see that I have an additional lift on the top end of the entire mix using the high shelf in the console EQ, which is set to about 12K. But of course, the higher you boost, the further down it ends up going. And then also I'm reducing the mid range at around 400 Hertz by negative 1.5 dB. It's honestly not that uncommon for me to apply an EQ in this fashion on most mixes by lifting the top end and reducing some of that low mid or mid range activity right between around 300 hertz to 500 hertz. Oftentimes, a lot of tracks tend to have a lot of energy in that region, and it's just easier to tuck it down on the entire mix instead of working at it one track at a time throughout the entire mix. So let's take a listen to the before and after with this EQ. I'm going to bypass this EQ and then reintroduce it. And it's going to be a pretty big difference. So let's sleep in for days And hope this life will never change We'll listen to our favorite songs And we'll sing along, we'll sing along So right there we've done so much with just a single plug-in to help dredge this mix out of the mud help it stand up and sound not congested, but wide and open. Again, right around 400 hertz, I've done a cut at negative 1.5 dB. And this is not every mix. It just happens to be this mix at this frequency, this amount. But I will say it's not uncommon for me to do this. And also a 12K lift at about 3 dB. So boosting that high end. And it makes such a difference, right? So just like that, with those two plugins, the Direction Mixer, for widening up the stereo spread just a hair by 1.2. And then the channel EQ lifting up 8K and above on the sides only. Those two tricks are from Andrew Sheps from a video course that I watched on Pure Mix. And it was just a game changer for me. I love this. And then additionally, the console EQ, it could be any EQ. But in this case, I'm doing a lot of cleaning up of this mix around 400 hertz, around 12K across the entire mix instead of having to place an EQ in this fashion on every single track. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel, Wide Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, widelogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.